Is mistaking a taser for a gun a plausible defense in the Brooklyn Center shooting? This is a topic report. Now, this picture here is a picture. Well, I'll get to it here. It's uh, uh, from a tweet here from Curtis Gilbert. I don't know who he is, but he had an interesting thread here. Uh, I don't know if this is the actual gun use because I couldn't find the actual gun use, but uh, I'd imagine that I believe their gun is probably, at the very least, maybe it's black. So I don't know if this is exactly a fair comparison, but the difference between the two, hmm. not really, not really all that, uh, well, I mean, really pronounced in, in terms of weight, in terms of a number of reasons. Well, we'll get to that. So Curtis Gilbert here says, The Minnesota police officer charged today with killing Dante Wright isn't the first cop to mistake a gun for a taser. It happens every year or two. Departments have tweaked policies to reduce the confusion, but one thing hasn't changed. Tasers are still shaped like guns. Now, I really... I, I don't know if I can get to this thread for him. So let's see if we can get to the thread. Okay, this is what I want to get to. I want to get to this thread because he has some interesting points here. The reason for the design is simple. According to the man responsible for the widespread use of tasers in law enforcement, it's what police want. Tasers haven't always been gun-shaped. The original prototype developed in the 1970s by scientist Jack Cover looked more like a bulky flashlight. That's the model LP LAPD officers used on Rodney King. Today, tasers are made by Axon. Its first weapon, released in 1995, also looked more like a flashlight than a gun. It sold poorly. Well, you know. Back in 1999, Axon then called Taser International, then called Taser International, had a breakthrough. It jacked up the power of the weapons produced and redesigned them to look like guns. Police departments bought them like crazy. And you can see what that looks like there. It's, uh, that's closer to a gun, but still... <laughs> Pretty, uh, pretty significantly enough different to me. In 2015, Axon founder Rick Smith explained that making the taser look like a gun was critical to getting got cops to take it seriously. Never mind the danger of making it look like a gun. No, no thought about that. Smith said his staff made foam prototypes of various designs and brought them to the policing conference. His favorite one was made to look super futuristic like the phaser from Star Trek. The cops all laughed at it. Officers were immediately drawn to the gun-like design. You just think about the psychology of these cops that refuse to buy a taser because it doesn't look like a gun. What kind of They have to feel, you know, the gun is the symbol of power and authority and the taser doesn't look like it power and authority. You look more like a, a medical staff professional when you wield one of these. Here, here, here's, here's what it is. Here's the medical staff professional. Here is a cop. What kind of mentality do, do our police have that, that they won't buy this? They have to buy this. What kind of mentality are we working on? This is, you know, whatever you want to say, I, I'm not a BLM fan. If you listen to this show long enough, you realize that. Uh, but uh, the, the police reform idea... The notion of uh, changing the very way that we do policing, I'm 100% in support of that. And that can be reflected in the fact that a 26-year veteran who was training another human being, she was training another human being, and she, as, uh, well, as, as, we, as we covered in the last story, you see this image here, joined the police department in 1995, served in 2019 as the police union's president Whatever's going on in that police department, and by the way, oh, well, look at her taser there. Well, you look at the taser there. That's a yellow taser. How, 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 how do you have such lack of... I understand how I might have lack of control in that situation, and I might possibly make a mistake and use my taser instead of my gun. Possibly, maybe. I don't really think so, but possibly in that heated moment where maybe you're fearful. I fear for my life. This is a 26-year veteran. This talks about the, the, the systemic problems that must exist in the Minnesota Police Department, that this is your banner, this is your standard bearer. A woman, it doesn't matter whether she's a man or woman, I'm just saying woman because she's a woman. I don't want to uh, vilify her because she's a woman. I don't want to go down that road. Uh, a human being, how about I just say that? A human being who has, has top-level standing in that police department and yet doesn't have enough training, doesn't have enough composure, doesn't have enough professionalism, doesn't have enough respect for the lethal power that she has over other human beings 
to be disciplined enough to pull her taser instead of her gun and to make sure before she fires, she's firing a taser. She even says taser, taser, taser. I'm assuming if you say taser, 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 that's pro I bet that's part of the training, that that is another period of time where you have an opportunity to make sure that what you're pointing at that person is a taser and not a gun. But because police officers, they, they, they want to feel the authority that they, that they do possess. And the taser that looks again, the taser that looks like this, that's a medical professional. That's not good enough for them. This is a taser that looks like authority. And, and a lot of these folks, they, you, you create a position that uh, creates authority over the lives of others, over, I won't say unaccountable authority, but nowhere near the accountability that we as citizens have. And what do you think that you're going to draw? I'm not saying that all cops are authoritarian jerkwaters, but I am saying you're going to have a high percentage of, 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 of bullies, of authoritarian bullies that will be attracted to that position. So that's the position that we have. That's the state of the affairs. And we have more stories here. If you want to go to freedomist.com, check out this link. And here's a protocol for Cumberland. You have more links here from folks that are talking about Columbus Protocol for Law Enforcement for Tasers and Guns, how the courts have handled, that's from Dispatch.com, New York Times, how the courts have handled accidental discharge cases, Roland Park Police Change Taser Policy following Brooklyn Center, Minnesota shooting. So all these police departments are like, oh, no, we got a PR problem. We better do something about that because now everybody's afraid. You can get all these tasers and... Uh, I, I, I don't really want to think that a cop is going to make a mistake between a taser and a gun. I would say the big change should be no more tasers that look like guns. I don't care what cops want. I don't care. You know what? Uh, yeah, I'll say that uh, the, the, the free market should not have a say when it comes to how our officers are armed. I'll just leave it at that. I'm 100% for the free market, by the way, but not in this case.